Hi, I'm Molly. Hope you're all doing well at home and for those of you who are still not working, I hope you're keeping yourselves busy somehow. As you may know, we released software version 1280 for all SD and quantum consoles a couple of weeks ago. I'll be going to be taking you through all the new features today and maybe giving you some tips and hints as to how you can utilize these features in your workflow. So firstly, this software version is available for all SD and quantum consoles. So all your SDs, Quantum 338, Quantum 5 and Quantum 7. So it brings them all to the same software version. Now, as ever, we've got SD Convert, which will allow you to change your sessions between consoles. And for the first time in a while, we've got a new feature in the Convert software. So up until now, you could only remove channels and buses if you were exceeding the maximum number for the destination console. You can now keep removing channels and buses even if you're within the limits. So this means if you're converting your session um, as a starting base for a new tour, you can keep removing any channels and buses that you know you won't need. Now let's have a look at some compatibility points. First up, the A168D and the A164D are now compatible with the SD and Quantum consoles via the DMI Dante 6496 card. So these boxes allow I.O., uh, just a couple of bits of I.O. anywhere around the stage or the venue via the Dante protocol. So you can connect multiple of these to one card and when you patch them in Dante controller, the console will be able to see if you've patched it to an input of one of these boxes and it will then give you gain, phantom and pad controls on the console. Now, while we're on the subject of the DMI Dante 64 at 96 card, this has always been able to do SRC and up until now that was a manual function. In 1280, this is now an automatic function, so we've removed the manual control from the software. Also, the DMI Clan card is now compatible with all SD and Quantum consoles. Up until now, it was only compatible with the Quantum 338, but you can now put it directly in an SD12, the Quantum 338, Quantum 7 and Quantum 5. Those of you who are unfamiliar with Clan, it's immersive in-ear mixing. Primarily, we created it for um, musicians for their in-ear mixes, but with all live streaming and uh, live streamed concerts going on, we've seen some people using it for immersive streams for the audience. So the DMI Clan card does all the processing you need and provides 16 immersive mixes, each with 64 inputs. When you plug this into your console, in the Audio I.O. page, we've now got a new button called Clan Control. Pressing this button will give you control over the card's name and the IP address of the card. Now let's have a look at some more features. First up, CG Spill. Now, a lot of people have been requesting this one and we've finally done it. So you can now spill your CGs directly from the, from the console. So up until now, you'd have to create a spill set and then spill that from a macro. Now, on the CG page, we've added a spill button to spill the CG. You can also spill it from the buttons underneath the encoders. And we've also added some macros so you can directly spill the CGs by using macros. Next up, individual AUX send safes. So from your AUX sends, you can now safe individual AUX sends. So instead of having to safe all of them, you can just safe one or two. Now this safe includes all sends levels, on off pans, all nodal processing if you're on a quantum console and all clang uh, controls as well. Next up, we've got ripple routing follows bank. So until now, you could only ripple route to channel number. Now, I've got a bank here with just a random order of channels. So 64, 66 and 61. So they're not in order. Tapping at the top of the page and looking at the inputs, we've now got two ripple by um, functions. So by channel number or by this fader bank. So if I ripple by this fader bank, you can see it's rippled one, two and three across these channels. Now this will only do one fader bank at a time. So you can just ripple 12 channels according to your custom layout. Next, bus outputs. So if I find some bus channels for us, 
out. Um, people like to send pink noise out of their buses to check outputs are working. And normally you'd route this through a channel, have a pink noise channel. Now, uh, if you're on a smaller console where maybe you're limited by channel count, you can now send pink noise directly to your bus output with the ident. So press and hold on noise, and that will send pink noise to your output. So you can do that with noise or the tone that's always been there. Now let's go through the menus on the master screen and look at all of the new features there. So first up in the system tab in diagnostics, under audio IO, we can now see rack PSU voltages. So I've got this rack here connected via optical and I can see in the audio IO page, my rack PSU. Next up in the files session structure, we've got a new button here, which is channel order. So where we've got the group order and the aux order, we've now got this for channels. So you can add mono or stereo anywhere in the channel list, and you can also move them up and down. So this is handy for if you've got some channels that you don't need anymore, you can get rid of them, or if you want to insert another, say, drum mic, but you don't want it at the end of the channel number list, you can have it at the end of your drum mics. Next up in layout, in fader banks, we've got a couple of new options here. So you can now view banks uh, in large or small on the overview or the master screen, and you can control this by bank or by all. So I can add, pick a bank and display small meters, large meters on the overview or the master screen. Next in the channel list page, if I go to edit some of my channels, you'll notice this channel setup panel now has up and down buttons so I can scroll through the channels without having to touch my mouse. Also on this panel, if you've got uh, an input or an output that's got multiple direct output sends, clicking on the outputs will give you a list of all of the output sends. Next up on the aux to faders panel, we've got a new button here, which is clear on close. So if I get some uh, sends on faders, so I'll pick mix one, we've got our sends on faders. With the clear on close button selected, when I close this view, it will clear the aux to faders. Now this is also the same in the join groups page. So now I've got cancel on close. So if I set the faders to join groups, closing this panel will clear that function. So there's less chance of getting lost and not being able to close things immediately. Next up, let's go to our options. So we've got a new surface option, which is auto revert LCD menu to solo. So there's a new time for this as well. So you can set your auto revert time with the touch turn control. So I'll set it to three seconds. If I use my LCD function to change the function of the LCD buttons, if you'll notice after three seconds, as I set on the console, it's clearing back to solo. So it means it will immediately be where you want it to be. Next up in the solo tab, we've got Solo displays aux nodal processing slash clang. So if you're not on a quantum, you won't have the nodal processing option. It will just be clang here. But on a quantum, you can choose to show nodal processing or clang controls when you solo a bus. So I've got some channels here. I'll select a channel. Soloing an aux with nodal processing, you can see the nodal processing has jumped up on the screen here for the selected channel. The same also goes for Clang. So if I select Clang here and solo a Clang mix, you can see it's immediately brought up my Clang controls for that channel. Next, in Disable, we've got a new function to disable the master mute. So this will disable all instances of the master mute. So if I disable this, the master fade has stopped working and going into my channels is also stopped there. 
Now going into my processors tab, or the effects tab if you're not on a quantum console, we've got a new global tap. So all of your delayed based effects, we've got the join global tap option here. So you can, there are various different um, timings, so half of the delay, twice the delay and so on. And then in the macros panel, we can add a macro for global tap. So I can tap it here on the console and you'll see in the effects page, we've got that delay. Next in setup, audio IO, now in the copy audio to list, we can see the USB and waves ports. So if you want to do a one-to-one -one patching in there, you can now do that without going to the audio IO, copy audio page. Next up in macros. Now, if you duplicate a macro, it will duplicate the name as well. So if you're doing on off macros, it will quickly give you a starting point for what you want to call your off macro. So that's all of the features in the live software. If you, if you use the T software, there are a couple of new features for you as well. So firstly, there are two new buttons in the players panel. So when you're changing players, you have to fire the current queue for this change to send all your settings. So we've now, fire, we've now added a fire current queue button to this panel. We've also added a new select all principal players to this channel. So if you're in the middle of some rehearsals and suddenly you need all of your principles selected, you can do that without having to create a set for it. Also in the theatre software, if you remove the join leave buttons for CGs, this will remove all instances of it now. So before it would only remove the LCD function, it's now removed it from the screen as well. Hopefully you found this video interesting and learned a couple of bits. And don't forget, you can always download the offline software to have a play around with these new features and see how you can start using them in your workflow. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.